What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet moveset guide. Now before we get started, I want to say that from now on, uh, I'm just going to be covering what you guys want. I want to know what you guys want to see me give my takes on. So this one, I went into my community tab and I said, hey, you know, what are we going to cover today? Uh, and the one with the most likes was Great Tusk, so that's what we're doing. So we're going to do the same thing in every video from now on. Go ahead, comment down below the Pokemon you want me to cover in a moveset guide tomorrow, and I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Uh, obviously, you know, the one with the most likes is the one that's going to win, just so you know. Uh, but let's get into it. Great Tusk is our first ground and fighting type, if I recall correctly. I don't believe we've had this one before. I'm probably forgetting something very obvious. However, uh, it has some pretty interesting stats, and it is, of course, uh, a Paradox Mon from the past, meaning that it has the ability Protosynthesis. This ability will boost uh, any one of its stats that is highest, so whatever the highest stat is, it will get a boost uh, by either 1.3 times if it's was it attack defense special attack special defense and then if it's speed specifically it gets a 1.5 times boost so remember that so basically defensively and offensively 1.3 speed wise 1.5 that's what you need that's what you need to remember going into this uh metagame because it is it is very interesting that they did that i, I would imagine it's to make sure stuff like i don't know uh like the fire types that are past forms don't get too broken by the fact that they get a sun boost and protosynthesis uh and still get to hold an item but this guy's pretty interesting i think he's pretty middle of the road but leaning more towards good uh stat wise he's got 115 hp 131 attack 131 defense 53 special attack 53 special defense and 87 speed uh, yeah, I mean, like, that 131 attack is really strong. It's a little bit higher than Urshifu, actually. So this thing's close combat is marginally stronger, uh, which will allow it to just absolutely annihilate things if you get that protosynthesis boost, allowing yourself to get that little 1.3 times multiplier. Uh, however, that speed isn't awful either. 87, while in previous games, might have been, like, just completely unusable. In this game, uh, it's, it's a little bit slower than Sword and Shield, at least towards the end of Sword and Shield, because we no longer have to deal with, uh, Tapu Koko, we no longer have to deal with, uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, the fastest things in the metagame are gonna be Fluttermane, um, I think it's Chin Pao, and Dragapult. Those are, like, the three big guys. Oh, and also Iron Bundle, uh, but... Yeah, for the most part, uh, you can actually get away with this thing pretty easily. Uh, the first set that I got for you guys is actually going to be making up for that pretty lackluster special defense stat while still being fairly offensive. What we're going to be running here is an Assault Vest set. We've got Close Combat, Headlong Rush, Knockoff, and Rock Tomb. It's a jolly nature. We got Max Attack, 76 Special Defense, and 180 Speed. That 180 Speed is just enough that if you get plus one speed, whether it be from... I don't know, you an effectively plus one speed. Let's say you icy win the opponent. Now you're outspeeding stuff um, about as fast as Dragapult. I don't know, maybe they're running Infiltrator Dragapult. But if you get plus one speed regardless, uh, you're going to be able to uh, outspeed pretty much everything in the metagame. Uh, close Combat, Headlong Rush, obviously are going to be your two main forms of stab. Be careful with those though. You do have the Assault Vest, but if you go for either one of those, you're basically negating your Assault Vest boost. Knockoff is just a generally good move. Like, I, it's surprising how many good things get knock off this gen. Uh, that's how you're going to be hitting uh, Ghost types, Psychic types. Like, if you see an Orangru, which is actually not a bad Trick Room setter this gen, just smack it with a knockoff and you'll get rid of like a Mental Herb and then you can follow up with a Taunt or maybe just KO it. The final move is going to be Rock Tomb. Like I said, that speed stat isn't that bad. So if we hit this speed tier with Rock Tomb, we're going to be able to slow pretty much everything down. Uh, let's say you're facing an opposing Fluttermane. Well, you know, you can go ahead and just go for the Rock Tomb into it. And then the next turn, you can follow up with a Headlong Rush. And that should KO. Like that, that duo will do it. Obviously, you have to be careful if they're like running, I don't know, Terra Fairy Moonblast. Uh, you're, you're gonna you're gonna regret that. Uh, but yeah, that's the first move set. The next one is a clear amulet set. It's the exact same. Uh, it's the exact same EV spread. However, we changed up some moves in the item. So obviously, the clear amulet is going to make you immune to intimidate, icy wind, any drops. Uh, and because of that, we've actually dropped our rock type move for the move bulk up. Once again, that speed stat isn't bad. You can still be like a fat Pokemon while it's speeding most of the metagame. 
So if you're able to go for like a fake out into a bulk up, now this thing is really dangerous. Uh, that protosynthesis boost, if you're in the sun, not only is it going to protect you from water type moves a little bit better, but you're going to get a life orb boost on top of that 1.5. Your close combats are going to start one-shotting things. Your earthquakes will start one-shotting things. The reason I actually ran um, earthquake on this set instead of uh, headlong rush, you can run it if you want, uh, is because I didn't want to double down on things that would lower your defense stat as soon as you use it, but you could run headlong rush anyways. I'm just a bigger fan of earthquake here. Um, actually, on, on the Thing, I might just say headlong rush. Yeah, on the on the slide I'll probably just say headlong rush. But yeah, earthquake is another option. Uh, and once again, knockoff. I'm pretty sure at plus one in the sun, you're gonna one shot pretty much anything that is uh, weak to it, coming off of that base 131 attack stat. In the final set is one that uh, uses protosynthesis a little bit differently. Uh, we're actually gonna be running leftovers, knockoff, body press, earthquake, taunt, uh, protosynthesis with a careful nature, 132 HP. Four, uh, 4 attack, 116 defense, max special defense, and 4 speed. That 4 speed there will hit you uh, a 108 as your uh, actual number, which is 1 point faster than the Pokemon who are trying to outspeed Dragapult at plus 2, which is 107. Uh, and the bulk is mainly dumped into special defense because that's going to allow you to uh, always eat whatever move you need to from, I believe, non-Terra... Um, what's it called? Non-Terra Fluttermane? Because Fluttermane is very dangerous. Uh, basically, the whole point of this is if you're facing a Fluttermain, you're guaranteed to live at least one hit, uh, and that will allow you to, you know, go for the attack with whatever Pokemon's next to you, and then probably finish it off with a knockoff or an earthquake. Uh, but yeah, that's basically just like, hey, I don't want to get KO'd by the best Pokemon in the game. That is that is the, the dump there. Um, however, the defense is just kind of dumped you know, we don't need that much attack. The defense is completely dumped in. Uh, and because we have such a high defense stat, uh, we're actually going to be boosting that with protosynthesis. So if uh, the sun is up or, you know, if you want to run booster energy, by the way, you can run booster energy on any one of these sets. I just think that this isn't a good booster energy mod for the most part. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, <laughs> if you end up running booster energy or you're in the sun, you're going to get that defense boost, which will power up your body press. And of course, you know, we have such a high defense stat anyways that this is actually one of the stronger body presses in the game. Actually, I can't really think of another one. Let me see. I'm going to look it up real quick. Body press fighting types. Organized by defense. Yeah, this is the strongest body press in the game. It actually uh, finally outdoes Kamoa. So this is actually be really, really threatening if uh, someone faces you with it. Uh, but yeah, uh, obviously partners you want to run with it. Uh, you're going to want to run Torkoal for the most part. I think that they cover each other fairly well. Torkoal is weak to stuff like Tyranitar, which Great Tusk absolutely annihilates. Uh, while, you know, you're also getting protected from water moves by the sun. Uh, other partners, Defiant Pokemon aren't that bad. I think maybe you could find a use for uh, Bisharp or... What's... Not Bisharp. What's the, uh, the fully evolved form? King Gambit. That might be a, a decent partner. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, you need to cover for this guy's weaknesses, but... Uh, I think that's all I really have to say about it today. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Great Tusk is kind of turkey-shaped. If a turkey had tusks and four legs, it's pretty turkey-shaped. So if you're in the U.S. and you celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, happy Thanksgiving. For everyone outside the U.S., uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your uh, Thursday <laughs> uh, and have a nice one. Bye, guys.